stock FPV, the price of everything has been going up due to inflation and FPV uh, quads have not been immune to that. Uh, Darwin FPV uh, has taken the approach to try and keep costs down as low as possible. So they're really the value play of the bind and flies. So today what we're looking at is the Darwin FPV Cine 825. It's a two and a half inch Cine Whoop. And I bought it in the base configuration. So my total cost was $152.99. Um, so I'm going to fly it like that and get my thoughts on it. We're going to see whether or not this thing really is a value play and worth the money. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at this thing. In the box, you get this comprehensive manual, which I always like and appreciate. Um, it tells you the prop orientation. And what's really nice, they do include a wiring diagram or pinout for the flight controller and then some beta flight configuration information. So a pretty complete manual. And then this package includes some spare screws. Um, it does uh, have this foam bumper that you can add to your prop guards. I'm going to go ahead and use those because I like having those on. And then it has a battery strap. And then it also has a spare plug, which is nice. So this, it, there's a connector underneath this. So that's all you get in the box. Not a big deal, but I thought I'd point it out. I did try to attach the foam bumper pads that they provided uh, for the prop guards. Um, the only problem I'm having is um, it's not adhering too well to the prop guards. Um, I did use some isopropyl alcohol to help with adherence, but it didn't uh, seem to help a lot. And then the other issue is um, these pads, if I look at it from the top, really don't provide much uh, bumper um, protection because the top of the prop guard pretty much is almost even, as you can see, with the uh, rubber bumper pad, or I should say foam pad that they provided. I might look on Amazon to see if I can find some thicker material, um, but just wanted to point that out. This is the configuration I used for my testing. Uh, starting out with the battery, it's a GNB 850 milliamp hour 4S battery. It's a lightweight battery. It's rated at uh, 60C to 120C. It's more like a 60C battery. It's not something you'd use for racing, but for a Cine Whoop, it's fine. Um, because this is a budget a Cine Whoop, I've attached a uh, Runcam Thumb Pro, uh, which does 4K uh, video. I did put an ND16 filter on it. Uh, I did have to use this iFlight uh, Balance Lead Beck, which is uh, powering the, the Thumb Pro um, camera. So the, uh, the all up weight in this configuration is 245 grams. So you're under 250 grams.
So to answer the question, do I think the Darwin Cine 8 is a good value for an entry level Cine Whoop that is sub 250 grams? And I say absolutely yes. Um, I would also say it's a good starter quad for new pilots. So let's go over the pros. I think the analog VTX has great range um, at 600 milliwatts. I can fly out to the clubhouse with little to no breakup. And that's normally where um, I start seeing a, a little bit of break up with a, a DJI a Vista. So I think it held up quite well. Also, um, the control link being Express RS gives you a peace of mind that you're not going to fail safe. Also, I like the, the frame design. I think it was well thought out. Um, there is um, a lot of things that I like about this frame. The first being that the electronics are easy to access once you remove the screws on the bottom. Um, I like the fact that the um, prop guards are this harder plastic, which is just extremely tough. I think you're gonna have a hard time breaking this, these frames. And if you do, um, it comes off as one piece. So really easy to change out the frame. Um, I love the placement of the USB-C port for the flight controller, and I wish DJI would have thought of something like this for the Avada. It, uh, you know, the Avada you have to, the USB port is on the side of the um, ducts, and it's just really, really hard to get to. So uh, kudos to Darwin FPV for coming up with a good solution for you to just be able to plug into this USB-C port and then bring up a beta flight configurator. So that's a good, good, good design. Um, also, I think the motors uh, were a good match for the weight of this quad. And it has definitely decent punch out with the 1504 3600 KV motors. This quad is actually not as noisy as other Cine Whoops. Um, of the same class. It's not that it's quiet, but it's not annoying. Like, let's say, I'm not trying to pick on the DJI Avada, but it is really noisy. And this is substantially more quiet than the Avada. And it is uh, not too bad as far as noise levels. Also, um, it's below 250 grams if you use a lightweight action camera like the 4K thumb. I also think the tune is spot on 
and is very easy to fly in both angle and acro mode. Um, I was very surprised at how well this quad does at light acro, so I think that's a definite pro on this. Um, I like that the uh, flight controller has a built-in barometer, and then the ESCs are rated at 30 amps, which is plenty for this uh, uh, Cine Whoop. You can also, if you want to, lar uh, you know, mount a much larger camera. Um, this is a kind of a standard GoPro mount here. Um, so if you wanted to go with a GoPro session, you could do that. I probably would not use this for a Hero 11 unless you remove the battery to uh, make it uh, lighter. The last thing I want to mention is the upgradability of this uh, quad to HD. And the way you do that is by using the Avatar Mini 1S, which will set you back about $109 US. Uh, since I already have a spare one of these, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this when I get the chance. No quad is perfect, so let's get into the cons. Uh, the first being is, I think the major issue with this as a pure cine whoop is it's hard mounted as far as the camera mount. And what happens with that is you'll get um, vibrations coming off the motors coupled into the camera, and that can cause... Um, instability in your video. Um, so I definitely think that's a con as compared to more of a pure cine whoop like this Beta uh, 95X V2. And you can see it has um, these rubber grommets that isolate it from the frame and the vibrations coming off the motors. So this is a, a much better solution. And the problem is if you have a camera like the Insta360 GO 2 that's sensitive to motor vibration. Um, I found that uh, tr I tried this and it was uh, the video was almost useless. Uh, and I was using a TPU, which does give it some vibration isolation, but um, it just did not like this frame. And uh, so that is definitely a con of this particular Cine Whoop. Uh, the next con is the, the foam duct pad is not thick enough and plus it doesn't stick to the plastic and I think it's just because of the composite of this plastic is just really really hard and, um, and then plus it's not thick enough to, to uh, do any good. So that kind of leads into you know this thing will mar up your walls because unlike my uh, Beta FPV Cine Whoop here these actually flex a little bit and plus I have foam bumpers and you can bang this into the wall and it's not going to scar up the wall. Um, this frame is uh, this plastic is really sturdy but it's not going to give and so it'll definitely mar your walls up if you are flying it around fast and hit a wall. Also I think that um, it is borderline as far as coming in at less than 250 grams. It kind of limits the cameras you can use. Um, like this thumb camera works okay, but if I was to put on like this uh, naked uh, Hero 6 GoPro that I have here, um, that's probably, well, I could go with a lighter battery, but it's, it would be pushing it to put this on. So uh, that is a limitation if you're sensitive to being um, under 250 grams. You know, the FPV camera on here is okay, but it is definitely a budget camera. So in conclusion, I think this is a great value. And I think where it really shines is being a good starter drone for new pilots. And why do I say that? The frame is very tough with prop guards. So if you crash it, you know, in a field or something, it's not gonna break very easily. I mean, I'm sure you can break it running into a brick wall, but these ducts are really s stiff. And then it's easy to replace the ducts. I should say the uh, prop guards. Um, also, it's very stable in the air in both acro and angle. I found it really easy and stable um, in the, the air as far as its flight characteristics. Also, it, it can upgrade easily to the Avatar HD system like I've already previously mentioned. So. If you want to dip your feet into HD, it's not that big of a lift to adding a Wax Snell Avatar Mini 1S kit. And then just if you have analog goggles, going ahead and getting the 
the Avatar a module uh, that you can plug into an HDMI part port of your analog goggles. Um, so overall, I just think it's a lower cost to getting in to FPV. So I definitely think this is something that you should uh, consider. So um, as always, I greatly appreciate you uh, checking in on my channel.